Dan Johnson here at Paradise City at Sun and Fun 2012. Today we have not only the privilege, but some honor to speak to the father of ultralights. He says so right on his hat, so I know that, <laughs> but actually I know that firsthand. John Moody was one of the first guys I personally ever saw fly a powered thing that we called a powered hang glider in those days. That's what I and what it. grew into ultralights much later. That was 1975 in Michigan, and that was near the beginning of your experimentation. It was something very much like this. Yes, it was. Except I think it was a Mac 101 engine, if I recall. Uh, that was the Icarus II airframe. Ah, and yes, it was. Okay. West Bend uh, engine, which was about eight or ten horsepower, depending on which catalog you're reading. <laughs> well, this particular one is kind of a storied aircraft now. If I look down here at the wheels, I see that you've evidently run through a bucket of yellow or orange paint. That's, uh, yeah, fluorescent paint. Yeah, and you did that on purpose, didn't well, you? Well, yeah, I, was at, I had an air show act where, where I dropped my wheels, and it was When a guy was hard. shooting you out of the sky, right? Yeah, he shooting me out of the sky. Well, the whole idea is I, uh, you know, I show up in an air show, I'm not supposed to be there, they try to weigh me down, I don't come down, so they shoot me out of the sky. And First shot, uh, one wheel comes off. The second shot, the two rear wheels come off. Third shot, the tail detaches and flutters to the ground. Fourth shot, the engine starts to smoke. The spotter starts smoke when it stops. <laughs> what's going to happen? No engine, no tail, no wheels, no brains. Uh, what's going to happen? I come down, land on my feet like we used to in the not so good, good old days of ultralight airplanes. And people think that is just. I've watched, I've stood by people who didn't know that this was an act. I don't know why they wouldn't think that at an air show, but they don't. And they're going, oh my God, they're genuinely distressed that you've, you've lost your wheels. Now you've lost your engine. This is not going to end well. And if there's one thing that keeps people watching, it's bad news. Well, and they think it's going to be bad news. Then he walks out with this smile we've got right now and everybody gives him a round of applause. And it's a great act. I love the act. My wife was standing next to the fence one time and two ladies were standing there. And uh, they noticed my wife wasn't, they looked over and says, you don't look too worried about this. Well, <laughs> a dead giveaway. That's my husband up there. She said, well, you don't look too worried. He said, well, don't worry, it'll, it'll work out all right. <laughs> now, she could have played that going, you know, I don't really like it that much anyway, so <laughs> keep watching. Yeah, but, I bet the insurance uh, paid up. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's a great act. And you have been very faithful to continuing the essence of what is a real ultralight. In my mind, that means something really light, ultra light. That was a word for a reason. Now, this whole airplane here, the way it sits, weighs about 115 pounds. 115 pounds for a powered aircraft with landing gear and with an engine on it. That's a pretty amazing fact. Yes, so. it is. But you've got another one here we ought to go look at too, John. Sure, I got a couple more. Let's go look at another <laughs> well, one. You know, John, when you first flew in 1975 up there in the Michigan dunes and you came to a hang gliding event to do that, and that's what I was very involved with at that time, I got inspired by what I saw, and it wasn't very long, I think it was only a year later, that one of the hang glider producers, a guy named Larry Newman, no longer with us unfortunately, but he was a big hang glider producer at that time, and he had an idea of, that turned out to be this aircraft, or one very much like this aircraft, which you notice has a seat that moves back and forth. It was weight shift in pitch, and then in side-to-side -side movement, there were lines that connected up and moved the rudder pedals, uh, moved the uh, uh, wingtip rudders, and it was an odd thing to fly, but it actually flew oh, it quite flies well. very nice. And you could land it virtually hands off right from the get-go. So uh, that was my very first start in any kind of a powered ultralight. I was an old hang glider pilot by then already, but uh, so I kind of got started this. And you are still flying one of these things, John. How does that work? I oh, just uh, well, I can't afford a brand new uh, these sport planes and. Uh, Somehow I've accrued these antique ultralights. <laughs> it's almost, hard to believe this is an antique, but yep, yes, it is. Yes, it is. And I, you know, I've, I love these things. They're easy to fly, easy to maintain. Uh, they can go in and out of small spaces. 
Uh, I mean, this talk would, about, this talk about a lot of wing. structure. Yeah. There this is would, not very much structure to this. Of course, the wing structure, but the rest of it is I think all the, wire braced and it's very I think light. This whole airplane weighs about 175, 180, something like that. 175 pounds for this aircraft. That's amazing. And it'll haul a ton of bricks with that two side. I'll get, this one has a single cylinder engine. And you say it's good and wind. Oh, yeah. Uh, these sails take the gusts and winds. They Far kind of, they the kind of vent wings. the gust, don't yes, they? Because they do. it's a flexible sail. Again, based on hang gliders. That's where yes, these yeah. things came from. That's how hang gliders work. That that thing that doesn't look like a solid wing to most people is not a solid wing. But when one wing lets up, the, the, the gust loads on it just are vented to yep. the side and they're actually pretty good. It what, also makes a very good training uh, machine because you can't stall it. Right, it's got a canard out here. Now, we don't yeah. see a lot of canards anymore, yeah. but the idea of a canard is when the nose gets up high enough before it stalls the main wing, this part stalls, Pretty and so good. it descends and you're back to flying again. The pilot really has to do nothing. When I was training people uh, at one point in the training place, I used radios and a radio control on the throttle. So <laughs> if, they, right? if, if they started coming off the throttle, on takeoff, which is likely to do, because when this thing takes off, it pitches up rather. Yeah, it quickly. kind of scares them and they relax. Scares them and right. relax. And those were the days of a spring-loaded throttle, were yes. they? Yes. Yeah. So if you let go, it went to nothing. Yeah. So I can over could override it with an RC control, <laughs> and if they're coming down and they're looking squirrely, I could. They couldn't land until I, let's say, they got out of range, or, or uh, I let them. So if they look squirrely, I could override it. And since I couldn't stall it, I didn't have to worry about that portion. All right. Well, nobody gets hurt in the air. It's always that fast yeah. off of the ground. Yes. So <laughs> if you prevented that, then yes, always did. well for a while longer. Pretty well, cool, it John. It worked good. What's, well, the, what's the story on the advertising, John, on the wings? I really don't know. I bought this thing used from a fella in Minnesota, and I think he got it from someone else. I would surmise that whoever owned it initially got some, uh, sold some advertising space to the local Coca-Cola distributor. And uh, when I got it, the sale was in beautiful condition. It still is, so, you know, I'm not going to change it. Well, I can add a little bit more to that because back in the days when ultralights were first coming out, we didn't even call them that then. They were still powered hang gliders, and FAA was really in a conundrum, didn't know quite what to do with these things. Yeah. But there were people who said, well, hey, I want to be able to be paid to fly. And they said, no, you can't. It's non-commercial. But what they would allow is for a company, perhaps Coca-Cola or a local bottler or something, to buy the whole aircraft. That was permitted. Yep. And then they could put the advertising in the wing. That was permitted. He just couldn't be paid to actually fly it. Right. But who cares? The guy that wanted the aircraft was fine to go fly it for free. I mean, we're pilots, you know, we'll fly for food kind of thing. And that's about <laughs> what they did. So yep. I suppose that's what you've acquired here. Yes, it is. Great. Well, we looked at, we're out here in the Moody fleet, evidently, <laughs> uh, because uh, now we're on your third aircraft. Yes. Now, this one is the Eagle XL? Yes, it's the Eagle that came along about a year or two after the weight shift with uh, three axis aerodynamic controls. It's got spoilers on the wings with the rudders, and it's got a, a canard that goes up and down like so. And uh, it's pretty much more like a regular airplane than the weight shift. At was. least in the way you work the controls. Yes. Yeah. yes. And uh, it was very good for training while you get away with it. I to take the harness off the weight shift eagle, hook it up here and hang it behind this <laughs> seat, put dual controls on here, and I could sit in the swing with a student in the seat, and I trained a great number, a fair number of pilots. That Is way. that right? Yeah. In those early days, uh, all these aircraft, they started off having to be foot launched, if you can believe that, which is one reason why the Easy Riser act where he lands on his feet is still a valid thing. They quickly dropped that when they realized that that wasn't promoting safety particularly well to make everybody foot launch and land. So then they said, well, okay, you can have a second person on board just for training. There was an exemption that lasted 20 years that allowed people to train with two people on board, but it was a single place aircraft in concept. Yes, the second seat only for that, but I had not heard that you did that. That's, that's an amazing part of the story. John, there's so much, and by the way, I have to tell you that I'm one of the John Moody Award winners, and it's this man whose name is on the award that sits proudly in my office, I'm happy to say. Well, you deserve it, Danny. Well, thank you very much, but uh, you go way back and have done a lot of good here. There's more about you that people may want to know. Where can they find some of that out on the web, John? Uh, my website is pioneerflyer.com. It's spelled oddly, P-I-O-N-E-E-R-F-L-Y-E-R. F-L-Y-E-R, Flyer. Okay, pioneerflyer.com. And you can read about the father of ultralights, 
And that may sound like somebody who's dead and gone, but in fact, he's very much alive and still flying. Key so to death once again. <laughs> thank you so much for talking to us today, John. We're here at Sun and Fun 2012 in Paradise City. We have information on this and many other aircraft of this type on my site at bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com.